Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's Data Color Spider Checker video webinar. Um, a webinar we do with Sam Nash. We are proud to have Sam here tonight. You can see him on the webcam at the moment. Hi, Sam. Great hey, to have you here. here. Yeah. Okay. So we will start with a few slides so that you know who are we and what we are talking about. And then I will hand you over to Sam and Sam will show us how to work with the spider checker video in DaVinci Resolve. That means you will see um, working with um, the waveform monitor, with um, also the vector scope and uh, that's what we will do. Um, what I will do, I will um, stop my webcam now because this will only take bandwidth. So um, Sam, if you want, you can also stop. So first, great to have you here tonight. Thank you. Okay, um, about Sam. Sam, it's <laughs> two slides you, ha you have given to me. So maybe you will tell us a little bit about yourself. Just a few seconds, please. Absolutely. So I am a portrait um, fashion photographer and videographer based in central London. I work with um, a lot of brands. And what I do is I build my stories by using visual storytelling. And what I do is I love to grab attention. So when you see billboard ads or the magazine articles or um, anything that I'm um, commissioned to do, I try and use my image is to grab as much attention as possible. And that's what really gives me my edge and my niche in um, in photography. And my speciality is location photography. So I'm always outside. I'm never in a studio because I find that really boring for myself. So you'll always find me in different locations. So I'm a very run and gun shooter. Okay. Um we have two more slides. Uh, one is about lighting, which is important, right, in your life and your really? way of photography. Please. So photography, actually, Greek word comes from photo means light and graph is uh, a graph or drawing. So it's actually painting with light. And without light or colors, we cannot get the images conveyed or shown across that we want to and it even comes as a commercial photographer and videographer we use subtle colors to really sell or we use it's it's almost like psychology by putting different colors or pops of color or getting our colors accurate really helps psychologically invoke an emotion from our clients and that's what we want to do we want to grab that attention so for example this image here is red and i don't know if you guys know this or not but red really brings out a fight or flight response in the brain so it gives you a quick instant decision that's why if you go to your note near a supermarket or if you see anything on sale when you see something in red it makes you do that quick instant um, action. So even if you think about any fast food restaurant in the world as well, McDonald's, KFC, Burger King, what color have they all got in their logos? Red, because they want you to make that quick snap decision to come in. So we add that into our colors. So color is absolutely really important to what we do. Okay. And here you have mentioned some of your clients and uh, I would yeah. say it's it's uh, yeah having a master of photography um uh you have the award uh, 23 therefore it's great to have you here so thank you so yeah i've put myself for a few i've won a few awards and i've had some i've been very lucky enough to work with some very big clients i'm also master of light for roto light i'm an ambassador for sony and I also work with Data Color. And these three companies I've actually been using commercially myself. So I only work with companies that actually work or I actually have the items in my camera bag. So if I don't have it in my camera bag, I'll never talk about it. Okay, thank you. Good. Let's have a look uh, towards uh, uh, the approach, uh, how to work and what products we are talking about. You see, we have the Spider Checker family. The Spider Checker family is quite, um, yeah, has a long history. You see the Spider Checker, the big one you can see here, 
It's more than 10 years old now. We, we have bring in the, in the meantime, a smaller version, which was the Spider Tech 24. And around half, a year and a half ago, we have the uh, handy one, the small one, the Spider Checker photo. And um, around two and a half months ago, we have a new product, which is Spider Checker Video. So this is for photography primary. And this is for video. So that's not designed for photography. You see um, a different shape, but it's important to know the size of the cards inside from the spider checker photo and the spider checker video are identical. So there will be a concept on this. So spider checker video uh, does not come with uh, a software. It works with vectorscope and waveform monitors. And this can be found in yeah, almost all professional video editing software. Um, we have, we are using a technology, the vectorscope technology, which came from a time, you see, I was born 66. So, but even at, at that time, a vectorscope was already there because, uh, yeah, it was um, done. They, they work with cards when they do films and they do television at that time, you see. Okay. So we have five cards in here and uh, four built-in and um, uh, an extra one which came in a little envelope. Good. Let's have a closer look, you see. Um, we have a different case, as, as I mentioned. It is just a different design that is a little bit better on handling than the previous spider checker photo, but the inside size the, of the cards is identical, you see. Okay, so we have five cards inside. Um, these are not semi-gloss, you see. That is something that is important because when you do a video, um, you see, whenever you want to do a color correction at the end of the day, uh, the colors of the reference card have to be correct. And if you have um, light, on the on the card and the light creates a reflection and even if you don't see that reflection this will have an impact on the light therefore the medium glossy cards the light uh, semi gloss card paper we have used here will help you to identify a frame where no reflection is on the card so you can see this is the real colors you can rely on. That's an important thing. It has something to do with physics. That's the reason behind. That's the reason why we did it that way, you see. And as I mentioned, the same form factor as the spider checker photo. That means we will have in the near future um, upgrade cards, side grade cards that allows you to go from spider checker photo to the spider checker video and you can set up your cards as for your project as you want to have them or you can also go when you have the spider checker video first and you say oh, oh i want to do it on on photo as well you can purchase the cards and have the functionality of both as the spider checker photo comes with software you have also in the video a serial number in but this is only when you have in the future maybe purchase these cross grade cards okay good i've been talking about five cards we have a patent pending card here um you see it's um for the vectorscope and we have done on this really old technology of the vectorscope we have upgraded this a little bit you will see it uh later on in the work and on the next slide here. We have a classical card. Um, maybe one information, what is also in here? We have a, uh, it's not a huge um, product, you see. You can have it in your hand and it gives you all the information. It gives you all the colors, the 100% as well as the 75% colors and skin tones on a handy device. For those who want to have a classical, here we have them. And we have a grayscale card with um, bl um, black, white, and 50% bar and 22-step uh, grayscale. It's important uh, in the waveform, we will see. A gray card, um, solid natural gray, and a focus star. So that's what is in here. And here, what I said, is 
the patent pending um, new card, the new design arranges that you don't, you will see um, the. 150% targets you have to correct. But what you will also see, you will see lines within between, and that's new. And this gives you an idea how the colors between red and magenta in this situation are um, showing here if they, are, if they are correct. And you can, of course, use the curves to correct them in DaVinci or all other applications. Good. Here you can see how this can be on a reference monitor in live view in Vexoscope. Okay, then we have the grayscale. You will see in the waveform monitor. So that means you have the white, the black, and the 50%, and you have 22 steps. This is to have the white balance, and you have also the contrast balance so that you see um, that the colors from the contrast point of view are correct. So this is important to know because I'd like to have um, a question I'd like to answer you at this point. Um, for those, uh, you just um, um, type in, uh, give us a little feedback here. Um, it would be interesting for us and also for Sam, um, to know who of you uses more than one camera in your projects, private or professional, nobody cares here, you're all welcome. And um, so I say around about 50% have already um, voted here. So thank you. Um, Sam, you can see the results in, in yeah. the poll section already. But what I will do, I will share, of course, the results with all of you. So I stop the polling here and uh, put in here the results you see in percentage. That means, okay, 43% only work with one camera. Um, but uh, if you see more than yeah, 55% at the end of the day do work with more than one camera. So that means this is something that will guide us um, to another question. For those who um, work at the moment uh, with one camera or even with more than one camera, how do you um, correct uh, currently your footage, how you match it when you have different cameras. Okay, and again, we see, um, oh, Sam, you see, a lot, more than 50% at the moment say they use it by visual check only. So hmm, let me share the um, results here as well. You see, 40% um, of you say, okay, a reference card, 5% using LUTs and 55% uh, do it visually. That's uh, interesting to know. And uh, if it's okay to you, um, I have two more, no, yeah, three more uh, questions to come. If we do it quite fast because we want to see Sam working, not me talking. And uh, for those who do um, uh, visual color correction, please. Do you think it's time consuming? And uh, yeah, thank you for that feedback here. Okay, I share the results. And uh, <laughs> you see, Sam, yeah. only less than 10% tell, okay, I don't care about the time I spend in color correction by doing it visual. Okay, um, we have... Um, Two more questions to come. One is just for Sam to know, how do you work in, in video? It's uh, for professional, for happy purpose. It's just uh, for us interesting to know about on this webinar. This is more for us also for the future to tailor our webinars more to our audience. So thank you. I share the results. Okay, so it's 70 and hobbyist. Okay, you're all welcome, of course. And the last question I'd like to ask you is on your knowledge in Da Vinci, because um, this is an, uh, a good um, point for Sam 
to tailor his presentation a little bit and to do some side steps maybe and in the one or the other direction to say okay for those who are beginners or who, for those who say okay i'm good or very good so thank you for your feedback here and some yeah Twenty yeah. percent uh, are the good ones. That's okay. So we have primary beginners plus. So if you use shortcuts, explain them tonight, please. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. So um, we are almost at the end. You see, uh, from my part, the spider checker video designed for video use. That's what we have. We say hybrid usage is possible with the cards. More information can be found. And for all of you, this webinar is recorded. That means you will get with the follow up mail at the end. Um, um, hopefully tomorrow, latest by the end of the week, you will get the link where you can find the recording so that you can look it up and you can see all the information and work so on. So, DaVinci Resolve and Spider Check a video in action. That means, um, Sam, I will promote you to be moderator so that you can share your screen with us, please. Okay, amazing. So, guys, I'm Sam Nash, as we said, and I am actually joined today by my DOP. So, as a commercial photographer, when we go on to video shoots, um, the commercial photographer works with someone called the DOP, Director of Photography, and the Director of Photography, so the commercial photographer and the Director of Photography work together very closely as a team. So, when we are getting the videos or clips it's very important especially depending on how many cameras that we have it's absolutely important to make sure our color grade is immaculate and that it matches especially when you're working with things like brands because if you can imagine if you work with still life say coca-cola and you get the red wrong it that brand is the whole representation of the company. If you're working with Levi's and they have a specific blue and you think you can just take your camera and make sure that it's any blue, um, don't you agree with that, Brenton? It's yeah, yeah, no, 100%. That these, these things take into, you know, you have to take these things into consideration, um, especially, you know, this is why it's things like your white balance is very important because your, you know, the, the white balance can be the difference between a good image or, or clip and a bad one. It can completely change the shade and the tone of that color. So it's, it's very important to make sure that, you know, you have your visual checks. But what I want you guys to remember is that a lot of the things that you guys do has to be almost perfect in while you're shooting rather than trying to correct it in post. It will make your life a whole lot harder if you think you can take a uh, image or a video of something that's supposed to have a cool light, but then it looks warm in the camera. When you now take that into post, there's a lot of information and data that you're wasting by changing it, you know, by, by altering that. So you want to get right in camera from, from the get-go. Yeah, exactly. And that's how we're going to, so we're going to talk about how to get it right in camera. Um, and then we are going to import two different clips in from two different cameras as you can see here so we've got two clips one over the other and with these um you can see that these clips are from two different cameras but we're going to match them perfectly and show you how that if you were working with a um with a client that how you would get that perfect color grade and how i would personally grade it so when i grade we grade to the brand standard and we always try what we try and do is get our colors as accurate as possible when working commercially so i know there's stylistic choices if you're making film or anything else so you can always get your grade to a certain level match your cameras and then you can add your stylized look to any of your clips too um by working with stylized things you wouldn't be specifically working with brands um you'd be more doing a, a commercial or trailer but that's also great to know so me and brenton will touch over that quickly too but when we to when we go into recording what we like to record in if you have a dslr or modern and um, mirrorless camera even the iphone these days can do it and what you want to record in is log or a flat profile because that will keep as much data as possible in your video clips. So by having a log, it will keep 
um, your highlights and your shadows. And it, what it does is compress everything together where you can then stretch it back out and you'll keep as much information in that picture as possible. So that gives you the highest amount of dynamic range. Um, so yeah, anything you want to add on what, what people should do before taking into DaVinci or importing the clip? So how would people, Brenton, um, once you've got your camera in your hand, how would you um, film it or any so, tips you can give? Um, one of the main tips that uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys is before you even start shooting, have an idea and a roadmap as to the look and feel of, of the video because essentially this will make things a whole lot easier for you when you actually get to the shoot. Have your shot list set out um, and make sure you know you have all your equipment ready. And like we discussed before, lighting is very important to whether you're doing video or, or photo to have lighting ready because essentially this this will help you to bring out the best the best image. Now one thing I mainly do uh, when I'm when I'm filming, so I, I'm a Sony shooter, so I'll shoot in in S Log three. Usually with the log color profiles, you have to be careful with your exposure because what tends to happen is that you can't necessarily expose it as if it's you know has a form of color profile on it um, because. What happens is a lot of information gets lost in the shadows. And then when you go and grade that in DaVinci or Final Cut or Premiere Pro, wherever it might be that you use, what you tend to find is noise. So the first thing you're going to want to do is overexpose by maybe one stop or two stops. Now, this is very important because then you can always bring back those shadows by turning down by turning down the highlights and then that way you completely eradicate the chance of there being any noise whatsoever so that's that's one of the yeah, steps that i take i would say yeah that's great starting point so whatever you're doing if you're shooting a log profile uh, you'd say put it over by one stop before you you shoot and then when it comes to lighting so we did say to talk about lighting is make sure that you're kelvin we obviously can change our white balance afterwards but just to save you guys time especially when it comes to clips and i know that as we did with the poll with boris and um, time is a huge factor to you guys so we're going to show you the quickest way to get these clips color graded so by getting things right in camera and then by using the spider data color checker video we can then show you how to get this very streamlined and get it fast to your client or get it done in a streamlined way because especially with me i don't know about you guys but when we work with um, commercial or fashion as you can imagine everything is due yesterday when they want a new line to come out if we're hitting london fashion week you can imagine when we're taking those photos, they need to be out. Like if, if we're taking video clips, if we're taking photos, wherever it may be, these need to be out. And especially these days, when I start, I start in just photography, but more and more people want video, especially clients and video is king these days. So even I would say 80% of my clients, if they want photo, they're going to ask for video too, because if, for example, you're doing a piece for a, um, a news article online, video clips will sell that article more and it will get you more views, more eyes, and it'll get you more shares. Um, and then when it comes to commercial stuff, so like if you're working for a brand like John Lewis or um, Marks and Spencer or anything else, um, video clip will also sell the product. So that will go on to social media like Instagram. And the beauty is, Everybody now has these phones which are OLED or the, you have these latest iPads or um, but the screen quality is very important to get your colors right because it shows and everybody now has a professional screen in their hand. So we really need to get those colors very accurate because that could make something from being a sale to being an absolute non-starter. So if this is specific, if I'm doing a brand for a shoot for Ferrari and I've got that red slightly off, as you can imagine, 
that is going to be detrimental because you know the Ferrari Reds and you know that's what sells that car. And the same for clothing, if we're talking about um, the Burberry colors or whatever it may be. So we're going to show you now how to get as accurate as possible. So I'm going to pass you guys to Brenton, who's the technical one with um, this, and I'll talk you guys through it as well. Okay, so I'm just trying to move this box for the webinar out of the way. So people can see. Uh, Boris, you can't see the webinar in the way, can you, from your screen? Or you can, yes. You see a whole screen. Um, um, the webinar box, you can see, it's transparent. You can collapse it. Um, okay, use the arrow on top. Yeah. You see? Okay. okay. So see that it's not in the way. It's, the, the attendees will not see it. Ah, okay, okay. perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, great. So as we guys can see, we have our clip here. I'm just going to turn off. I'm just going to mute the the sound so that it doesn't annoy you because otherwise it's going to be scrubbing. Mm -hmm. So as you guys can see, we have our data color right here. The first thing we're going to want to do is at the bottom of your page, you have... and. and 80% of you are beginners. So I'm going to kind of do this in such a way that everyone can sort of understand from a holistic point of view. Yeah, so we'll go through it slowly. And what I do want to add, Brendan, is that we have shot these. So I, we have got the latest and greatest cameras in our arsenal, but we actually shot these on two older cameras just to show how much color and how accurate we can get these back up. So one of these was shot on an A7 III and the other one was shot on an A7 V. So A, A7 R5. So, um, so they're not... Well, one of them is modern, but one of them is not so. So what we're going to show you is how to match those up perfectly. Okay, cool. So we're going to start with our first clip here. You can see, oh yeah, and just so I should mention to you guys, you want to avoid reflections now because th this, this gives off the wrong data that we're looking for. So as you can see, if I scrub through all the footage, if, you, if I stop here, if you yeah. see that reflection there on, 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 on the grey card, on the grayscale, sorry, um, it's it's not showing any data at all. But if I scrub back backwards here, that's a good frame to pick because all of the information from for the image is actually in there. So first thing I'm going to do is go on to color. Yeah. So explain some how you got here because this. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So at the bottom, at the bottom here, you have uh, your different shortcuts to. The different things that you you might you might need. So media is to import your footage. As you can see, we've got the different clips here, um, and then you're gonna this cut the cut page is what you're gonna use to basically cut your footage um, into the slots that you want it in. Because obviously, with every bit of source footage, you don't use every single second that you recorded. You might just use two seconds of one of of, of one clip and five yeah. seconds of another. So it's basically your chopping board room to cut your clips down. Essentially. And then you have your edit. This is essentially where you would go and edit this your your, your time sequence, essentially. Um, okay, great. So you make your final timeline here. Your final timeline here. Okay, so guys, so you do this all first, put your timeline together, make your video. See, so like so. So that one clip after the other, and then what it does, it will work straight into the next then clip. Then let's clip like so um and it is possible for for some of you that aren't comfortable with davinci to work in um premiere pro or final cut pro and then import your sequence into davinci so that you can color grade the reason why we are using davinci is because of its use of um you know in, it's just a standard exactly it's got the most robust color color science and color grading that you are uh, on all i would say the main competitors hasn't it yeah um, essentially. So, so what a lot of people do so don't be worried if you don't use da vinci you can still use uh, premiere pro or um apples um and what you can do is just then import your final clip into here or import your sequence and then a lot of people use da vinci resolve just for the grading because that's how good the grading is Okay, right. So if we go on to color, um, now you might recognize this little bit here from the the vector scale from the um, presentation, but we're not going to start there. Where we're going to start is 
by actually isolating um, the data color. And what we're going to start with is the grayscale. The grayscale. So as you can see, the effect that it's had on um, our, our, our vector scope. So if we go into the waveform, right, you can quite see um, our, what, what we were talking about before. Um, it's in, like a staircase, isn't it? So you can see every single step. And this is how you're going to get your perfect white balance now. Okay, cool. So the top part, essentially, if I just go back to our curves, and then I go to edit the white balance. If you can see the top part, it's too, basically the information in this footage is, is, is squeezed up too much. So what we want to do is open this up. So essentially the top part um, of our data should be anywhere between 900 and 1,000, 1,023. So as you see me making these adjustments, you can clearly see that the effect it has on our image. Now, you're going to ask yourself, okay, what have I just done there? Essentially, I'm just bringing back all of that data that, that wasn't there before and, and correcting it from not my visual point of view, but the mathematical point of view, if that makes sense. Yeah, so what we are talking about earlier is log where everything is compressed. Now, what we're doing is we're de-squeezing all the colour and all the goodness out. So as you can see on that diagram now, you'll see every single part will have its own specific um, square so that you can see every single bit of data we can then adjust perfectly. So you've got your 25, your 100 and, and your white. Right, so now you can see uh, now you can see that the top part of the graph is in, is between nine hundred and one thousand and twenty three The middle part should be around five twelve and the bottom part should be anywhere between zero and one hundred and twenty eight Now, what I'll then do next is if I click off that give me a second, sorry. Yeah, that's amazing. See how you've got the blacks perfectly and the whites now? Right. So now, as you can see, he's got the color, uh, sorry, he's got the black levels right and the whites. So this is really showing you, but then we're going to fine tune this now as well. So as you can see from your, your scopes to the bottom, <laughs> We're going to start de-squeezing and getting all our colours to the right points. And if I was to just go half and half, you could kind of see the differences. That he's just made, but maybe split it um, horizontally rather than here. <laughs> so you got <laughs> half bad. the face. Yeah, that's better. There you go. So all he's done there is with that is de-squeezed. And can you see how much colour and how much... Um, how much we've de-squeezed that image trail. So you don't need like a LUT for this. And the great thing is you can do that very simply and very fast. Um, and then what we'll do is then we can go into our individual colors and vector scope. And what we'll see from the vector scope is where the colors change. And that's what we how we want to get them super accurate. So we start by looking at the vector scope here. And then what will we do now? Right. So um, now, DaVinci has got something called nodes, and this is why most people use DaVinci for their color grading process. Now, what nodes are, um, are basically layers to the effects that we're making on, on the video. And now, if you go into like Premiere Pro or, or, or Final Cut or whatever you use, it may even be Canva, you don't get that. That, that feature on that workflow. And essentially what that does is it adds too much information to the image for the, the, the computer to, to you know, interpret and process. But what DaVinci does is essentially separates those and then layers it together to give you one good image. Now, the way you create a node, as you can see, this is my first node here. Now, you right click, add node. <laughs> you okay there? Yeah, sorry, I, sorry. No, I just got over a cough. So 
what he's going to do is keep adding nodes and each node will you can add a different thing so you can do your white balance on one node your grayscale on one node your color correction on another node and by having your separate nodes once you come back to it you can then um, once you come back to the actual footage, if you want to change one part of the image or if you want to correct that, you can do it on that specific node, which is absolutely amazing. So it's a very non-destructive way to work. Okay, so the first node here would be our, our, our white balance and brightness. The second one is going to be our, our U. And the third one is going to be the saturation. So all you're doing is adding these nodes and connecting them together for people that don't know. Right. Are you guys still all with me? Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> Perfect. Um, what we're going to do here now is we're going to go onto our curves and then have a look at what happens when I adjust the brightness of the video. As you can see, if you look at the image and then look at the waveform and the correlation between the two, the more brightness I bring into the video, the more stretched this information is, as you guys can see. However, normally what happens is when we're editing videos and color grading, we do it by eye. We don't, yeah, that looks all right. That looks all right. Yeah, that's what but, most people said they do it by eye, but we're going to use specific colors now by using the... Um, Okay. There we go. By using the uh, vector, so we can see the, where the colors are, and we can actually hit all our targets. And by hitting the targets of our colors, we can see the range, and we can get them very accurate, and very fast. And it's a lot better than doing it by eye. By eye, you are never going to match brands, and you're never going to match um, your, you're never going to match the brands exactly, and you're never going to match. Um, What's the other, what's the word for it? Sorry, I'm losing my English at the moment. <laughs> uh, you're never going to match brands and you're never going to match the exact colors that they use. Sorry, that's what I was trying to say. Okay. okay. So going back to what I was saying, as you can see, there's quite a lot of different colors going on um, in this image, especially with her hair. So what we're going to do is bring back some of that information. I'm just going to zoom in. Sorry. Bring back some of that information and then make the image not too saturated, but we just need a little bit more saturation because remember, we actually started in with a very flat, a flat, ungraded image. Okay, so what he's doing now is putting um, up there. So, what we're going to do is go back to the vector scopes. There we go. And here you can see all your targets, guys. So from here, you'll have your target for each color. And what you want it to look like, see, as you can see, the yellow has been pushed right up. So we're going to use our vector scope now to then warp the colors and bring them back into our targets. But we can even do that with the graphs too, see? So we're going to hit that into our target yellow. And by hitting that right into target, it's getting you that exact color of yellow that you're supposed to be using and see how it's brought the skin tones back in because the yellow is right on target so we're bringing all our colors and all we're doing is stretching them back around to our target colors and then from there we can then go into more stylized looks but by hitting targets that's where you get accurate color readings especially when we're using these vector scopes Right, so you guys can see all the differences there. We did choose the best model with the most colors in her hair, didn't we? <laughs> the makeup. Okay, so if you pull back out and show the image on a full screen now, so if we zoom straight into her hair, can we zoom in and look at the hair? See how we've got these colors back, and these are very... Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. These are very accurate to life. So this model we had had very extreme colors in the hair. And then if we go and zoom into our spider checker, then we can see that those colors are they actually, they actually match what's on the spider checker. And right with videography as as a, as a whole, what we tend to try to do as videographers 
or cinematographers, whatever you want to call it, is we like to show contrast in our footage. And if you look at this this um, this bit of footage here, there's quite a lot of contrast in it. So mm. the buildings are kind of, you know, in the shadows. And then obviously with good lighting, you shouldn't be able to tell that we used lighting. However, we obviously did use a roto light yeah. to, to bring out the highlights and, and the midtones to the model herself. And that's what's made her really pop compared to the background. Even though the colors are accurate, by using lighting or bringing in specific lighting into the scenario is really making our subject pop. So as you can see, especially when it comes to conceptual advertising and commercial work, um, what we want to do is sell the product or make the product pop. So if you guys were looking at that um, as a video, what are your eyes drawn to straight away? And it's the product in her hand and it's the model herself. And by using lighting and color and then accurately matching the color as we've just done there very simply and by matching the vector scope and onto the notes here. So what we wanna do is just spread it back out. So we're hitting our vector scope and notes and, and getting those colors and skin tones accurate. And then from there guys, you can really have a play around and then make it more stylized but by doing this and you can even copy and paste these notes onto from one clip to the other and that just really matches onto but by going here so if you've got the same lighting conditions you can really save some time yeah so then if we're going on to the next note now is that right brendan yeah so here um so remember we said the first one is our white balance and brightness, which we've done. The second one is um, our U, and the third one is our saturation. Now, with Da Vinci, with, with Da Vinci, sorry, as you can see, there's, for those that are beginners, by the way, I know there's 20% of you here that know exactly what, you're, what I'm talking about, but there's quite a lot of different buttons and different things that might confuse you. So we'll kind of keep it simple, if, if that makes sense to you. So if we go back onto our curves, you can clearly see when I play with, oh, sorry, my bad. There we go. If we go back onto our um, saturation uh, part. Now, the thing is about this image here, if I just zoom in a little bit. Oh, I don't know where my image Where's is going. Oh, sorry. <laughs> just go back here. There go. Sorry, the magic. This magic mouse is a bit temporary. I might disconnect it in a second. Okay. Now, with the eyedropper tool, you can clearly see when I go to the different parts of the color, um, it shows in our graph here at the bottom in our color warper. So let's just say I go to skin tones. I can see exactly where I need to go to play with the skin tones. Yeah, see, so making makes minor adjustments there. And these are very stylistic looks now. So we've got it accurate from using our vector scope. But now what we want to do is add some, maybe some style or flair into it. So without actually messing around with the product in the hand, or say if we, we've got the red right from Coca-Cola, if she's holding a can, for example, which I don't know, which is a famous brand that I'm thinking of. Um, what we can do now is either add more into her skin tone, maybe brighten her up, darken it down, but whatever mood we want to give. And by giving a mood into your video, it's going to also play with emotion. And emotion is very, very important because if you're trying to sell a certain product or convey a certain message, what we do it with is not by doing it with mathematics. We do it with playing with emotion, mentality, and it's psychology. And and psychology of colors is absolutely huge. So we have every one of these colors has a psychological effect on the human brain. So when we're talking red, as I said earlier, you've got that fight or flight response to make a quick decision. But then if you go into blue, blue gives you colors that you trust. 
Um, so you see blue every day. Blue is the color of the sky. It's also the color of the sea. So it's a trusting color. So if we want to add more trust into our brand, what we'll do is we'll push the blues up a little bit or try and play with our blues to really make that a little bit more trusting. So I don't know if you've seen any ads recently from banks or but if you see a lot of bank ads, they will have blue or we'll have make sure or like an, an agent that will be selling you a house or a letting. So you look at the difference between this yeah. grade here. And then when so we, what um, he's doing is just adding some blue into the shadow area. See where it's color, keeping the colors accurate. And then if we go into greens, that tells you more nature or the, the product is good for us or it's eco-friendly. So when we click onto the greens, we can even then play with that to make that the dominant color. See how he's just changing that ever so slightly onto your vector. So look at the vector scope on the right bottom, guys, and see. So we don't ever want it to come out of the wheel so that the colors are accurate, but we want it to be close to reality as possible and, and close to our targets yeah exactly so we're keeping our vector scope in the targets but what that's doing is really bringing out those beautiful colors and as you can see guys from that graded footage um it's really good so now um do you want to go on to saturation or shadows how how can we change those or yeah Okay, so I'll pass you guys back to Brenton, who's our DOP, and we're going to go into uh, the next node now. Okay. Okay, so what Brenton's doing now is going on to the window, and he's going to isolate. God, you couldn't have stopped at a worse clip of him with one eye open. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Okay. So okay. what I'm going to do now is go back and I'm going to isolate the color swatches. Maybe it might just be easier if I zoom in. Yeah. But yeah, and if you notice, um, the data color also has got skin tones on it too. So that obviously, you know, there's there's skin tones in between this, but this is a kind of a good sort of outline as to what your skin tones should kind of look like. So our skin tone is going to be this one here. And as you can see, relatively, it's pretty much close to to to, to this uh, skin tone here. Yeah, it's very accurate indeed. Okay, so what you've done now is masking off the... Um, there we go. So he's just going to crop it in tightly and then he's going to mask um, the colors. And then what he's going to do is edit from the colors. And from the colors, we should be able, there is a little bit of fringing on this camera. But yeah, as I said earlier, that's because we're using an older A7 III to do this. So this was, I was actually doing a photo shoot with this, with my camera and my assistant took these clips. So that's what we do in, and we always have BTS clips, which we then use and match from different cameras, especially assistants or anyone else that you might be shooting with. And when you're working, even if you're doing music videos or anything whatsoever with video, um, you, a lot of you are going to be end up using a couple of cameras, I'm sure. Even if you things like weddings, whatever it may be, you're going to end up using more than one camera, even if you think you don't. And by adding in that second camera, they're both sensors are going to see it completely different. Even if you've got the exact same camera, I guarantee you they're going to see it slightly different because it depends what your angle you're shooting from or the sun catching or whatever it is, it's never going to come out exactly the same. And what we do then is make sure by isolating this and getting the colors right on both of them or on multiple clips, it really helps to get that image in um, uniformity. And that's what's really good. There's nothing more jarring than watching a video, is there, Brenton? When it changes, it jumps from color to color. If it changes, yeah. it, that, that's the most unprofessional thing that I think you can have. Okay, so uh, we have our color wheels, our color bars, and the log wheels. So if we start with if we start with the um, the color wheels, right? We're going to start with the lift. Now, essentially, when you adjust the lift, it can bring more saturation or take away 
from the saturation. However, if you look back at the vector scope, what we want to do is essentially try to match our targets. And before I actually continue, um, it's always good to increase the visibility of your vector scope so you can actually see it a little bit better. And then sometimes I turn down the graphical so that I can actually see the colors. The colors more accurate. The yeah. colors more accurate. Oh, wow, that's really major pop, hasn't it? So, yeah. Yeah, so you as, you, as, as I said, you want to increase the brightness of the actual vector yeah. scope so that you can see. I, I don't know why I think you have it on a medium setting to, in the, to, to begin with anyway. It doesn't really make sense to me, but... <laughs> That's the problem. The people that make the programs aren't the people that use the programs. <laughs> right. So we want to bring up our saturation here a little bit. This is what the lift will do. And yeah. then if we bring down our gain, and again, you're playing with these to hit your targets. Yeah. So as you can see on the vector scope, guys, see he's bringing the different colors into so what you want to do is play around with these wheels to make sure that you're getting them in the right spots as well so you want your targets to be very accurate so he's going to change by changing the temperature your tint you can even change your contrast and pivot as well of the colors but this is very very technical and you really want to make sure that these colors are as accurate as possible so what we're going to do now see as we can see these are slightly off so we're going to what look at our chart and get these on point now. So we need to add some yellow. As you can see, the yellow is very, very faded. So we're going to go into our gain and add it into the yellow section. And then we're going to lift some yellow as well. And see how that's brought that yellow back right back. So I would say that's a perfectly accurate yellow. So what we want to do now is go through every single one of these colors. So we'll go back and then look at our blue and everything else and so on and so forth until we get it right. And then if we go on the graphs, we can actually go through and click on your RGB and go through individual colors on your curves. And that can also, so if we click the, just the R and that will just change our red. And then we can then bring our red to make it more accurate on a C the wheel. So we can control the red just by itself and to get that exactly into. And by using the red, that will also then mix in your pink. And then we go into our blue. And that and by getting each of these, each of these RGBs accurate, it will actually pull the other colors right into where we want them to. So there's our green. And what we want to do is what you really want to do is have a slight S curve on colors as well, just like you would with um, video and photo or if you're having a LUT. So we're going to move our green and as you can see, Brenton's getting it right into that box. Can you guys see? And then we've got a green. And then he's going to go into the blues, which have now gone way off and then so on and so forth. OK, so if we look at our clip now. He's got a very, if you actually look at the model now and the color of the dress and the hair, let's go zoom back into the hair, Renton. You can see that these colors are all individual, all pop and all very, very accurate to life. And this was done on a 10 year old camera. So what we're going to do now is go on to our second clip and we're going to do the exact same thing, guys, and we're going to match it across. So here's our clip for our second model. And we're gonna so Brenton's gonna talk through how we're gonna do that again. And let's just do it one more time and to match these up, and then you guys will have a great understanding of how we would go through um colors. So we're gonna start with our first node and then go from there. So going back to what we were saying, if you look at the vector scope, now the vector scope has got no information on it because it's in log, right? So I think just for the people who um, who are complete beginners to Da Vinci, it will always be good for you to watch tutorials on Da Vinci in your own time and just have a look at how the software actually works because then you'll get a, a better insight and a better understanding as to what you're doing. 
Um, but as you can see, when we uh, change, when we change the settings on on our on our, on our graph for the curves, um, when I go up and down with the whites, you can see it's getting darker. And if I go up, it's getting lighter. This is essentially your shadows, your mid ranges, and your highlights yeah. in terms of color. Because if you think about how um, RGB works, that's basically every single screen that you use, whether that be LED uh, screen, OLED, they all work off the basis of these colors. Now, going from the beginning, like what I said, uh, if I simply Go back. So we're going to go start back again. He's going to isolate the greys and then we're going to start from there and add up our nodes. And, and then remember, we're going to get a beautiful colours that are very accurate. And this is what we need to do for our clothes. But as you can see, guys, I know we've waffled on a lot, but what we actually do is very fast. And by using these, there's even ways to do it with just a few clicks, isn't there, bro? Yeah, there is. Yeah. But that way, we'll that, way the end, but yeah. that, that way is cheating, actually, because yeah. you can almost do all of these with a few um a few clicks a, a few simple clicks by showing the color graph in da vinci has a new software that uses um artificial intelligence i believe to then grab the right colors so just with a couple of clicks brendan's going to show you so i think his keyboard shortcut and colorize and it will actually get it pretty accurate for you i think it it hits a 93 percent color accuracy using the um if it's got this so, in the picture which is great guys for you essential but I'll, you know what i'll get onto that afterwards yeah okay well yeah we'll leave that just, for the end. i'll get into that afterwards okay so going back to what i was saying now if you remember before we isolated um these the, the grayscale so if i go back on to If I go back, yeah. So if you follow what Brenton is doing now, and he's going back onto the bottom, and we're going onto our curves. Right, is everyone following? Can you? Okay, I can hear everyone. Sorry, I can't hear everyone. I, that's why there's no response. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. <laughs> good. So you we're going to back, me. yeah, and then what we're going to do is. We're going to stretch that back. And what to get these colors accurate, we're going to make it like an S, S curve. So we want to bring our blacks down enough so they're all separate. So we, this is our shadows, the bottom half, and the top half is going to be our highlights. So with the Y, we're going to get this very accurate here. And we want to do it just before it stops. So if, that, if you go too high, you can see that these two have merged together. What we want to do is where it's split, so you see every single color individually. So you've got every single block is its own individual color. So that's your S curve, and that is going to be your most accurate curve. And then we're going to do the same for each of the colors now and um, by adding the secondary node. So we're going to go into our second node now. And we're going to add that in. And here's where we're going to add color. So if you go back on that one and then stretch that over to take the mask off. Yeah, mask is off. Yeah, put that. There we go. Yeah, just stretch. Yeah. Uh, now okay. for the full image. So put that back where it was. Can you get that thing back up? Oh, oh you just yeah. did. Yeah, there we go. And now what we're going to do is stretch it over the image so you guys can oh, see what Oh, yeah, no, sorry, I used a shortcut. My yeah. bad. He was sorry. He was, I'm doing it, everything manually so we can show you guys. Sorry. So we're going to stretch over the image. And so just with our S curve, can you see? So should we do half image again so we can show them how yeah, before and after? Half, half image. Yeah. So just from that, and that only took a couple of seconds, guys, just making that perfect S curve using your data colors checker is absolutely essential. And look how beautiful that curve has come with your balance, your white balance. So now we're going to go into the second one and go into color. So here we go. If you want to do the same and make a half box or whatever you want to do on the next one. Um, and then we can go from there. Oops. 
Right. By the way, remember what I said about skin tones um, and looking at your skin tones and sort of just seeing if your skin tones are matching. So here we can see the skin tone I would pick for this one is, is this skin tone. They're, they're pretty close enough. But once we added some color to it, we'll then be able to better understand what's going on. Okay, so now we're going to add our second node and we're going to go into colors. Sorry, before we do that, if I just, uh, oops. Here we go. The brand is going to, if I just stretch this out a little bit so that you guys can actually see, see the whole thing that's just being layered. Because once we've, okay, cool. Now we're in our second node. And now what we do is we're going to look at the colors and we'll stretch those back up. So we're going to make a curve for each of the colors. And what we want to do is go start on our highlights, guys, and then work our way into the shadows. So make sure the red is accurate to what we've got. So here we go. And then, as you can see on the vector scope, we're hitting the targets. We want to be hit exactly. So we want to bring the red there, and we want to bring the shadows down because the shadows are now bleeding into the other colors. So we just want to make sure we're hitting that accurate. I'm stretching it back out into our target zone. So here we go, bring it up, and then we can make a beautiful S curve without hitting our other colors, see? And that way we've got more accurate of a red. And then we'll go into our green, and we're gonna do exactly the same thing, guys. So we can look at our vector scope, we're bringing our green into target, and we're going to make it the same S curve, bring it back down here so we're not losing the colors. And we want to basically make sure that our colors all join so that we have got very accurate colors um, on our vector scope. So we're going to bring our greens here. And we're going to make sure that our vector scope starts splitting up again. And then we'll go into our blues finally. And we're going to make a similar S curve as well, and that will then bring our blues into. So we want to get them very mashed into our vector. See, as you can see now, I've stretched that out, but we haven't stretched out all the way. And what we'll do now is we go into our whites. Yeah. So now what we can change is the main balance of color with the white, and by bringing that up and then bringing the shadows down. So we're going to bring it up and maybe we'll make a slight S curve on this one too by bringing the shadows down. What's happened there? My white's just crashed. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we've got one there and we're going to bring the shadows down on the white to give us a more accurate representation. So there we go. So our yellows are accurate. We can see our blues are more accurate and then our pinks are accurate and our reds are accurate. So what we do now is we go back onto our note and we'll restretch that out and we'll see the colors here and we can then match it. So now we're going on our color warper and we're looking at our notes and we're gonna warp all our colors back to where they were on the original clip of the first one and we're gonna push. So we're gonna push our colors and out meet, even more. And, and meet the targets. So we really want to hit targets. So that's the thing with this. Um, DaVinci gives you your targets and you just want to make sure you're into your targets. Because essentially the same targets that were on the previous shot are going to be the same targets that are on this shot. Now with DaVinci, luckily, you can actually um, simply copy the first color correction that you've done and paste, paste it onto on. the other clip and it will auto match it using AI. However, if you do do this, you may need to make minor adjustments, minor adjustments but de depending on the lighting, because if you can see the differences yeah. between... So let's have a look at these results now. So we're going to stretch that back up. Wait, sorry. No, that's wrong. We've copied the colors over and then we've added the saturation. Sorry, two seconds. One second. Yeah, see, as you can see on the vector scope, the blues have just gone way out and everything else has just blown out. So we're going to bring this all back in and we're going to hit them back onto target. So here we go. 
So what we're going to do, you can see the vector scope, you can see each of the colors on the range. We're just going to bring them back into the right areas. So you can see the blue, you can see the greens, and you can see the yellows. And can you see it all stretched to one side? What we're going to do is stress them all back out evenly. Sorry, one second, guys. Oh. So he's just reverting back to the original state so we can get those colors right. And what we're going to do is go back to our vector scope now. Just bring the white right. There we go. Okay, and we go back into. So he's going to just go back to the because what that's done is copied over the both clips. So we're going to just reset that and start that again for you guys. Sorry, two seconds. So we're going to go back into our vector scope now, and as you can see, everything's back squished in the middle. So we're going to open up the image from the top. And then we're going to go through it again, but we can actually see the image onto, there we go. So that's our very flat image. And what we're going to do now is um, what we did last time and get those colors back in. So he's going to warp the colors to then stretch out the vector scope because this is in a log profile. So it's very, very flat. So they really need to be pulled out. So here we go. So he's pulling the reds back in. As you can see at the bottom, we're getting an accurate red. So as you can see, it's going from a very dull red from the bottom. And as he's pulling it back in, you're getting the right reds and the right skin tone. And then if you zoom into the color checker, you'll be able to see so that red, once you hit your target, is the right red, see? And that's how you get your accurate red. So now we're going to go through to do a yellow. And I would work that way across where oh. red and yellow is the very most important colors. Um, so red, yellows, and pinks on the top of the scale are the most important when we're working with people. And why is that, Brenton? Because that's skin tones. And skin tones are so important, especially for a colorist like you, um, to really bring those in. So what I do as a commercial photographer and videographer is I will get it to a certain point, but then we get a DOP or a special colorist like Brenton who can really just dig in and make sure those colors are super accurate. So what he's doing now is really fine tuning. So by playing with the vector scope and moving these um, and warping the colors across, you really is really getting, see the saturation of the hue? He's changing that and really getting those colors finely tuned in. So we're gonna push the blues out now, but as you can see, the skin tones are absolutely excellent. And now we're gonna bring the blues back in from the sky. Here we go. And now, can you see the vector scope for the blue? And you can see the sky and the blue is very accurate because we're hitting onto our target. So we're using that each time. And then we're going to go down to our greens side. And green is a very cinematic color. I'm bringing that back in. Let's start accurate first, but let's show us how you can stylize it. And by adding a little bit of green into shadow area can also give a very cinematic or filmic look. Very popular these days, guys. So, Brenton, tell us what you're doing. Uh, so, right now, I'm just trying to stretch out the colours and yeah. bring back um, quite a lot of the information that uh, we not lost, but like that was compressed in in by using uh, the raw or log format. Um, now, essentially, there are quicker ways to do this, um, but that but that's literally just getting into your footage and then just throwing in a lot. That's what most people do, but... It's not accurate, is it? It's not exactly accurate. I mean, you can do it if you're going for a specific look or feel. However, it's always better to use the data color because it gives you more control over what you're actually doing. Exactly. So if you look at now, so after we've done that, if we zoom in now to the color checker, you can see that we've hit our colors very accurately. So we've got our skin tones. You can see where the light is even molding around her face in this tone. And you can see how beautiful the, the light from the rotor light is hitting her face. And you've got those shadows. And then we've also got the beautiful blues from the sky, which is very accurate to what it is in London at the moment. So 
And I think what we will then do is go back yeah, and to bring our the highlights, highlights back and, in. Yeah, and then we can do that with um, the grayscale. So looking at our grayscale, we zoom into the gray side of the of the the card, and we can make sure that everything's separated, which it is. See, so we've got every single black and gray on a separate plane, and we can make sure that they're all within this boundaries. And by doing that. We can also make sure that's very accurate. Okay, so should we tell everyone the shortcut how to use this to get it done very quickly? Now, to get this done very quickly. So we're going to import another clip in. So we're going to go back to our clip section and put a completely new clip. Here we go. Oops, so we're going to show you half and half this. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we're going to go into our media. And we're going to select a completely new clip. Without. So, but we have to make sure that the spider check is in the clip and it's very predominantly shown. So we're going to use one that's got the spider checker. And what we're going to do is, so the color graph is going to automatically jump there for you. And this is the quick sweep, but obviously it needs a lot of tweaking afterwards if you want to get them super accurate. But it's for beginners or hobbyists, I know 80% of you guys are hobbyists. What we do is we get the clip and we look for where, so use one with a spider checker in it. And what we can do is we'll give you some keyboard shortcuts to really get this program using it. Exactly. So as you can see, um, this one hasn't got one and this one has one. Essentially, when you're filming, what you want to do is for reference for reference point you want to use your first clip with um the 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 data color um and this is just so that you can get your colors right and you've got a reference point as to where to go from um the ones without the data color because it's not every shot you're going to you're going to have yeah, somebody yeah. holding that this is literally yeah. so you can make sure your colors are right so unless you change location or the time of day or the lighting changes then every time you change scene we're going to put another data color shot in. But as long as you're in the same scene, the same lighting conditions, then you, you've got that one shot that you can use for all your clips. So you can do 10, 20, 100 clips in that one scene. And then once you change scene or location, then you just do a quick five second clip holding the card, make sure there's no reflections on it. And then you can use that to, um, you can use that to then edit that again. And then you can just copy and paste your settings onto your next one. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up another clip now with um, of the other model holding the data color. So if we go back to our media, okay, and we're going to go and click on one of our clips of uh, holding the data color, which is let me see, not that one, maybe that one. This one. No, it's not this one. It. No, let's do a different scene. Uh, no. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So let's go on that scene. Okay, so we're going to grab that and we're going to go onto our timeline. Okay, so which clips, two clips you want? Do you want? I these? just want to show this one, the new one we've dragged in. So we're going to put that right uh, there. This is the new one we've dragged yeah. in. Yeah, so let's drag that across and bring that into our timeline. And so this is going to be the quickest way to do it. So we're going to use the keyboard shortcuts to to auto colorize from the data color. So, and let's show how that works now. So, All right, so to do that, you're gonna click, well, this is for Mac. So I'm sorry if you're on a Windows, but I'm sure. But we've got a button there as well that you can use, I'm sure. Oh yes, there is actually. So should we just do should that? You go to color and auto color. Yeah, so it's got it pretty accurate, but then you'd have to go back through the steps uh, that we were saying on your color. So if we go back to our vector scope, we can see that it's hit some of the targets, but we can see that it hasn't hit all of the targets. Now, remember what we were saying um, earlier, uh, if you do it by eye, again, you know, just changing stuff like your brightness on your screen, 
Uh, I don't know if you guys can actually see me doing that, but that affects a lot of your workflow. So you can't ever really trust what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes your computers, your MacBooks, they go into power saving mode, which kind of plays with the white balance. And, you know, if it's dark, it will adjust. There's loads of things that you, you see. That's why I always use a Spider Color X2 check. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what we're going to want to do is hit our targets. Yeah, so see he's bringing the blues back in and then it's very easy. On the, so this is the quickest way to do it, guys, uh, if you want a very accurate color. So he's just literally going to warp the colors back into exactly where he needs them to hit. Um, so see, I don't know if you guys can see it that well, but we've got like this new Mac screen and all our colors are hitting the targets perfectly. So we're just going to bring the yellows down a little bit because they've come too high. But apart from that, the other ones need to push in up. And then if you go into that, you've got a beautiful HDR vivid image. And these are very, very accurate colors, as you can see. So if I zoom in onto the hair again, you can see from our first clip that we've just done that in a few seconds and you've got very clear and the skin tones then are perfectly balanced with what we were talking about earlier. And then even if you look at your data color, you can see how accurate that these colors are. So if you were holding your data color in your hand, you can see that this is pretty bang on. So we'll show you how to do that within a few seconds, guys. And by the way, just so you guys know, we've actually used the lowest codec in available. So this is available. eight bit instead of a 10 bit. So with 10 bit, you have a lot more to play around with, but we wanted to show in eight bit because the majority of people, um, we and I know you're not going to talk to like the top end professionals here. And we wanted to do it so that we can show that any work on any camera can be commercially viable and it doesn't matter. As long as you've got the right tools for the job, you can get it fixed. And by having this data color, you can really fix and adjust those tones. And by using these charts, it's so easy to see where you're going and where you're going wrong and matching up all your clips. So, yeah, anything else you want to add, Brenton? Um, other than that, I think maybe it might be good to um, actually do another webinar one day um, where we show the different work processes and the other softwares importing that, those clips into DaVinci yeah. and, and doing a project from, from start to stop. But today, that would be amazing, like a full, like yeah. full in-depth you know, yeah, webinar, exactly. but we just need to get as much of you guys committed into it. So, you know, tell your friends and everyone else that, that 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 does videography or photography to to get involved in what we're doing um so that we we can provide this kind of service for you guys yeah it would be great actually we, we should speak to the guys boris and uh, ernest the data color and see if we can actually maybe do a commercial for them and um film it and edit it live yeah on yeah on the and next show, I, I, no you know what i think might be a bit right yeah if we show the entire program pr uh, process yeah. from the filming well, actually, no, the pre-planning, yeah. the filming, and post-production. Yeah, if you guys would like to see that, then, yeah, give us a shout. We'd be happy to do something, definitely, uh, maybe after Christmas. But, yeah, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. I believe we're going to do a QA and a now. Is that right, Paul? Um, yeah, we have uh, just a few slides. Um, therefore, I will take over, no problem. Perfect. Uh, Branson, it was a pleasure. Um, thank you. And, uh, Give me a second. Here we are. So here we have stopped at my end and I will continue. No problem. There's not much. You see, as we had um, a lot of beginners uh, with DaVinci, for all those who need some, some basic knowledge and color management, data color, you see, we have the tools, but we also provide the knowledge because color management is something that it's like photography. You have to learn a few basics. It's not just installing software. It is you have to know a little bit about the tools. And therefore, we have a, um, a color ebook, we call it, and it's free of charge. Here is the link to get it. And 
For those who need more information, okay, you can reach out for tech support. Um, uh, the most convenient way is the online ticket system um, where you can just uh, submit a ticket. You go to our website, you go to support, and on support, um, you will just uh, uh, get the product support so that you have our support section where you can submit a ticket. So, okay, then it, we are coming to our last slide. No, not to our last slide. There are more slides to come. But um, at this point, I will uh, turn off the uh, recording now. So thank 